I'm John Miglosh for the Wisconsin DMA and the International Society for Strategic Marketing. Okay, I got a really interesting story uh, off of Adland, um, which is one of my favorite places for news I would not necessarily see. Okay, so, and that's from, anyway. <laughs> So, we may not be too organized. i got too many things going here today. Um, there was a Great Depression patent for pattern packaging spawn, that spawned an entire industry of feed sack fashion. Okay? So, you're getting your flower bags, and they weren't in those five-pound bags. They were in like 30-pound bags. Right? We buy popcorn in 25-pound bags, but they're basically in a kind of a paper bag that won't rip. So it's not very interesting. But anyway, this guy figured out um, this guy figured out a way to make to print on the flower bags with dissolvable ink, so that XYZ flower would be on the bag when you bought it. But when you took it home, you could wash it, and uh, the underlying pattern would show up, and you could use the whole flower bag for. Um, for whatever you want to make out of it, okay? And it turned out that there were then whole industries with making new patterns and changing the patterns, and here's a mom and daughter, and in many cases, the pattern of how to make a dress would go right with it, and, um, you know, it was all cotton. It was beautiful stuff. Bag company, here's, I don't know these patterns, gingham or something, I don't know, uh, but a you know, some kind of floral print. Here's a, a color one with different colored bags. And, um, you know, th and there was a whole industry of flower sack wear. You see, and it's pretty good. And uh, it talks about how you can make furniture upholstery. <laughs> you can make adult dresses. You can make kids' dresses. Uh, really interesting. And that's the kind of creativity that, generates millions of dollars <laughs> in tr in tough times look at all the patterns here and here's an old <laughs> here's an old feed mill guy with a cutesy teddy bear or kitty cat bunny something <laughs> bunny flower sack and all the different varieties of them and they just wash off i i didn't even know that okay and there's plates that show these old things. Here's more designs. And then we're back to the beginning. There we go. Okay. Also from Adland, I got some work from home propaganda posters. I don't know what exactly slack means. Probably it means something that I don't know. Uh, agile work from home. Dun, da, da. Yeah. I wish we were building some more stuff. Good news from home. You are in quarantine. <laughs> right. I was listening to a, a to Scott Adams' show, and he, he was talking about how doctors were saying that that any information you hear was not peer-reviewed, and I'm going to write Scott later and say, yeah, but it took me five years to get a peer-reviewed article published. There's nothing about COVID-19 that's current that's also peer-reviewed. Can't have it. This doesn't work. Okay, and I can tell you from my history of science degree that Organized science will crush any dissension they can. Okay, loose lips interrupt your parents while they work from home. We can do it by using Slack threads. And again, I don't know what Slack is. I want you to go on mute when you're not speaking. That's for your Zoom conference call. Someone talk, but they're still on mute. Yeah, that's another one you see a lot. Turn off the mute. Let's finish the job. Urgent, update your cards in Trello today. I don't know what that's about either. Anyway, I just thought I'd show you that. So that's kind of fun. Okay, on to some more real news. Now i got to go find it. Okay, my social, here we go, my social smartphone. A new app came out, which I think is pretty cool. It's called Social Safety. There are other devices and stuff, but they're like 100 bucks a piece. This is just an app. I think does it on Bluetooth, so you don't even need GPS or anything. It just, you know, if you have the app and you have the app, and you this is mostly for for workers. If you get close to too close to each other, they beep. Simple. That, that's a that could be a way to get us back on track. This, this sounds like a great idea to me. Okay, just saying. Okay, now on to um, I should say Domino's 
is up 7%. Year, uh, year over year, sto same store sales. I did a video a couple of weeks ago about how they had perfected touchless baking and delivery. And uh, so most of March, they were only up a couple percent, but um, since then, they've been up 7%. So that's not everybody's getting hammered. Our local pizza place, as I told you, I promoted the buy a pizza um, delivery day uh, last Friday and or the week before, and they were up. They had their best day ever in the history of their company, which goes back, I don't know, 15 years or something. Uh, contact delivery. We're a 60-year-old brand that has rewritten most of our standard operating procedures in the last six weeks. That's the CEO from Domino's. Yeah, that's good. The chain believes its decision. This was an interesting point. The chain believes its decision to avoid third-party delivery aggregators. That's like these foodber, foobers. <laughs> Uber for food and all that. Um, that would have been a funny name, Fuber. Um, aggregators, they don't, you know, Dominic's you call in and they, they know who it was. And, you know, they don't market me much for doing all that because I do order from Domino's regularly because there's one by church. And we have board meetings and, and I'm supposed to bring an entree. So I just call Domino's while I'm on my way and it's there when I get there. Uh, nice and hot. We've made the decision over time to continue to own customer relationship on the front end. Interesting point, right? You wouldn't have thought of that. Okay, here is, um, oh, Disney, this was a funny one. Disney um, created a storm Monday because it said that um, if you, you, you know, Star Wars is releasing the latest film on May 4th, which is May the 4th, we wish you. <laughs> I think Star Wars are the dumbest movies ever created. The idea that, you know, Luke would lose his, wife and then murder 50 kids or something and become Darth Vader that never settled right with me but there's so many there's so many things that are so stupid I can't even talk about Star Wars so I just basically pass unless my kids want to watch it on stream later but Disney um, <laughs> Disney put up a tweet that says First, they said they sh you should share your Star Wars memories. Share your Star Wars memories with May the 4th hashtag. Uh, and you might see your posts on somewhere special. Later, they put a f they, they tweeted back to people who'd used it. Uh, by sharing your message with us using May the 4th, you agree to our terms of use. The message in your account name and all in all media, you agree to the use <laughs> our use of your name and tweets in all media and our terms of service use here and <clears throat> then they clarified it and said well that only applies to if you use May the 4th because somebody said well it's my birthday why can't I say May the 4th uh, they said you have to mention at Disney Plus and May the 4th and um, the whether anybody actually gets in trouble with Disney <laughs> If they said, I didn't want it used, you know, the fact that Disney can tweet a contract that you're obligated to, that's a little much. <laughs> so some intellectual property attorneys said, yeah, that's probably not going to happen. They're just, they're just pre-asking you. <clears throat> of course, if they compensated you, that would be nice. Okay, the last story I wanted to touch on was that Tesla vehicles now recognize and respond to traffic light stop signs with the latest software update. Okay. And um, so why do I care about this? Yeah, the vehicle will slow for all detected tra traffic lights, including green, <laughs> blinking yellow, and off lights. So even if the lights aren't working, it still slows down. Even if they're green, it slows down. So you may want to pay attention to that. I did find a video that... Um, that <laughs> Let's go over to the video here. I did find a video that actually the guy was testing kind it of out. Get used to like using the um, accelerator or the cruise control to confirm that I want to go through it. I gotta say, this is really, really annoying that it's only letting me go 45 miles an hour because I'm gonna get lapped here. I mean, no one's going 45. Right. So, so the, the, before. The, I could definitely go faster on this road using autopilot. You could go right, faster. So, we got so a they've taken the up. autopilot away, kind of, and said, and "We're on now." Here it comes. Is that a stoplight? 
I'm gonna tap the accelerator. Boom, yeah, yeah, it's just gonna tap run. The, there, there so was an, the there was a stoplight coming up. It, it starts works. slowing down. You gotta tap the accelerator. Uh, to go now through. it's stopping in two. Oh darn! I did it again. Hit the brakes. I can't put it back on. So it remains uh, now. Green ugly Porsches right here. Man, that is just a terrible, terrible color. So here we got a turn stopping for traffic control device on 100 feet. Stops and makes me take over. All right. It's another stop sign. Stopping in 50 feet, draws the line, stops. Well, it worked pretty well for stop signs. I mean, now I want to go left. All right. Okay. All right. All right. <laughs> That's like now, whether you know you're the passenger that's telling you how to drive, now you get this thing telling you how to drive. So I don't know that it's quite all that it's cracked up to be. But, but that said, I wanted to talk about labeled data set because I'm working on that patent again for how to do labeled data set. In mail, you get a labeled data set. What is, it, what is that about? Well, okay, so you've seen this, are you human? And it used to be you type the words in. But then all of a sudden, it was these squares, and most of the time, it's saying, it's saying, where's the traffic light, or where's the stop sign? And people say to me, well, I thought that was just to verify I was human. No, I said, that's not what it's about at all. What they're doing is they're getting millions and millions and millions of pictures so that they can find the tra traffic lights, so that they can put it in a car software sometime, which now they have. See that? Just released that yesterday, I think. And so now... They have a start, and what they're going to do is they're going to they're going to work on having people interact with it so that it gets how people like it or hate it or whatever. And the, it'll get more and more, it'll get smarter because now once it's in the car, now we get the label data set from everybody driving the car that has it on, and we get when do they type the gas, when do, do they hit the gas, you know, at what distance and other things like that. And so we'll get a lot of other feedback, but we had to get it to a certain point. And so this over here was to get the, the car enough visual uh, software with the label data set. Now, why is this important to marketing? Well, because 87% of marketing AI projects fail. They never even get to AI. They never even get to ROI, I'm sorry. And so what what the reason is, I figured this out about a year and a half ago, is that they don't have a label data set because you don't know where you saw the ad. You don't know where the attribution is, right? You don't know what's going on in your own head. It's it's not a fault of advertising. It's not a fault of your head. It's that we store things away and they influence us and you make purchases and you don't know where the, you don't know where the idea came from. Your wife was whispering it in your, pearls, pearls. <laughs> I used to say that over my kid's crib, Wimbledon. <laughs> One of them became a pretty decent tennis player, but they were all short, and you can't, you know, you, you got to, it's not impossible, but anyway. Uh, so there's these messages in your head. Now, and so when we try to track down the advertising, especially in digital, we don't know, there's, there's too many things going on. We don't know the source. We don't know which exact image. We don't have a hard connection between the ad and the decision to buy or not to buy. Whereas in mail, we know who got it. We have a list of addresses who got it. And when you buy, we have a list of where we shipped it. So we know who, who probably was influenced by that, by that ad. And you had to pay attention because you had to throw it away. So we, have, we know who got it. We know they saw it because they had to see it just to throw it away. We know who bought, and therefore we know who didn't buy. And we can compare who bought with who didn't buy, and that's how we use the label data set. And that's how Tesla is using the stop signs and the stoplights that you've been clicking on for the last couple of years. I'm, I'm wondering what the next project will be, because that first project that I showed you, that was about, that was about uh, word recognition. And for a while, they were actually taking words that the computer had trouble um, parsing and recognizing. And so the, so the humans were figuring out what that was and making the OCR software more intelligent. And then we went on to stoplights and stop signs. And, um, and so the patent I'm working on is a way to connect the buyer and the, and the ad much more tightly. 
very, very tightly um, and making it easier to use digital advertising to sell. So uh, we're working on it. But that label data set is the puzzle. And because we've been working in mail, because that was the, the big question I kept asking, why is it that I've been able to do machine learning assisted um, AI, if you, you can call it that. AI is just a generic term. It means the machine's involved in picking stuff. And so how, how is it that for 25 years I've been winning against other methodologies with machine-assisted decision-making when no one else can get it to ROI? And it's partly because I've focused on mail all this time. So if you want a, a leg up, if you're thinking about while you're sitting around doing nothing, if you want to leg up on your AI and your customer segmentation, using mail at least as an, as an experiment or a laboratory might be the key. Give me a call. 262-442-9994. Ah, catch me on LinkedIn. It's easier. Like and share. Your friends will think you're smart. Have a great day.